minutes. Uh, first is a brief discussion on why companies invest in WMS. Uh, the second will be a deeper dive into WMS value driver categories. And third, uh, we'll wrap up with other considerations for justifying and more specifically managing change as you implement WMS. There are a few solution types available for, for warehouse automation. At the low end, there are point solutions that attempt to automate existing practices by overlaying existing processes with barcoding data collection capabilities. Uh, some companies attempt to basically just uh, put data collection over their existing uh, ERP systems and try to get the improvements there. But the, the biggest risk with these solutions is they do not enable warehouse best practices. So you might end up just doing the wrong things only faster. Uh, regarding doing the wrong things faster, management guru Peter Drucker said, efficiency is doing the thing right. Effectiveness is doing the right thing. At the upper end of the market are Tier 1 WMS solutions, such as High Jump's Warehouse Advantage. These solutions offer the ability to leverage operational best practices, uh, but, but typically are designed for more sophisticated, high-volume facilities and can take uh, 6 to 12 months to implement. Excellos One Warehouse Management System, which is what we'll be talking about today, is built specifically for the small to medium-sized business market and offers best-of-breed functionality to allow you to re-engineer your processes. Uh, the Excellos One WMS can be up and running in as little as 90 to 150 days with a standard configurable design. But as with any technology investment, you should first ask yourself, do you even need the solution? Regarding WMS, when the industry first started in the late 20th century, Having a WMS was a significant competitive advantage. Now, however, having a WMS is basically a cost of doing business. Essentially, the more connected and extended a supply chain becomes, the greater the effect a WMS will have on the overall bottom line. This is especially true in the new global economy. If you're working in an extended supply chain, the lack of WMS makes you a less valuable trading partner, putting you at risk as being the, the weakest link. Now there are various issues that WMS can address and specific operational characteristics where the solution may be a fit. Uh, from an issues perspective, you might need the solution if your order volumes are increasing, especially if this is the result of your customers ordering more frequently but in smaller quantities. Think just-in-time deliveries or your traditional e-commerce orders. Or if your overall inventory values and or quantities are rising without an associated increase in overall revenues. If sales are not growing, higher inventory levels could be the result of lost or misplaced product. And customer complaints are on the rise. This is especially true if, if you're not shipping product as needed. Or in general, if your, your inventory record accuracy is on the decline. This is typical of more volume or activity in the warehouse and increasing space constraints. And you might need a WMS if employee turnover is an issue and getting new people on board and up to productive rates um, can be detrimental to your, to your budget. Now from a facility operating characteristics perspective, um, you may be a WMS candidate if you have at least uh, 50,000 square feet of warehouse space. Again, these are all reference points. Um, you have at least uh, 10 warehouse employees with the majority in being in the picking function. Um, you have at least uh, five dock doors, maybe you have at least 5,000 SKUs to manage, or you have special inventory control requirements such as lot, expiration date, or serial number tracking that you need to aggressively manage. Like other operations, because you're consuming resources from the company and potentially asking for more, you should be measuring and managing against key performance indicators, or KPIs. While different facilities will have different metrics, a good place to start defining KPIs is the Work DC Metrics Report by Dr. Carl Mandra. You can contact Dr. Carl direct for more information on this report at carl.mandra at gcsu.edu. If you're measuring against these KPIs but not achieving these stated results, at least at the median level, investing in the WMS should help. Regardless of how the system will be justified, it is important to manage all key stakeholder expectations. Also, keep in mind there may, may be sacred cows around the facility. For instance, claiming a reduction in inventory by implementing WMS may be double dipping from a promised inventory reduction from a previous system implementation, perhaps an ERP implementation. 
Because business case has much to do about numbers, you might be interested to know 111 million, 111,000, 111 squared equals the very palindromic 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. At a top level, there are three primary value drivers you should realize from implementing WMS. The first is improved efficiencies around inventory utilization, labor productivity, and space utilization. The second is improved customer service levels in the form of on-time and accurate deliveries and being able to satisfy changing customer requirements. And thirdly, the, the real-time access to information to allow leadership to proactively manage operations. To drill down a bit further, when justifying a WMS, benefit savings can be broken down into tangible or hard dollars and intangible or soft dollars. Keep this in mind as you develop the business case to avoid inflating the benefits side. Next, we review various types of benefits associated to WMS projects, starting with hard dollar or tangible benefits. Using WMS provides real-time inventory updates and improved inventory accuracy, reducing the costs associated to inaccurate inventory records, including uh, poor buying practices and excess safety stock associated to buyers' lack of confidence in, real, in record accuracies, uh, delays in order fulfillment associated to lost or misplaced product, lost sales due to stockouts or overcommitments, costs associated to placing and managing back orders, lower labor productivity associated to searching for lost product, and potentially higher freight costs resulting from expediting shipments to customers. Now with a good WMS and instilled operational discipline, you should expect 99.9 .9 plus percent inventory record accuracy. This benefit will be the building block for other improvement opportunities. For a typical warehouse, the biggest cost benefit will come from an improvement in labor productivity. Direct and indirect labor benefits result from several areas including this maximizes the time operators spend adding value, filling orders, and receiving product. Both equipment and labor productivity will be improved with real-time information and system-directed tasks. This minimizes search time and dispatches operators to the appropriate tasks. Most of the information management requires will be available online versus stacks of paper reports, and administrative savings result from reduced data entry labor hours, reduced data entry errors, and real-time entry of information. And you should expect to improve labor productivity by 20 to 30 percent. This could result in doing more volume with the, the same amount of labor, reducing overtime and headcounts, or both. Regarding labor savings, the majority of the savings is typically found in order picking, which, which accounts for at least 50 percent of the labor costs in the warehouse. Within the picking process, travel time can consume 50 plus percent of the time. WMS can help reduce wasted travel time associated with picking. And in general, you should be able to practically eliminate time spent searching for lost inventory and improve pick labor productivity. Speaking of picking, the type of pick process you use is driven by cost, handling characteristics, and order profile. Being able to match the right pick process to the right order profile will result in improvements. If you do nothing else coming out of this session, I encourage you to understand your order profiles by analyzing six to 12 months worth of order history and develop an order distribution graph similar to this chart for your operations. Then begin to think about how you can manage to each order type. This is an example from a customer where we analyzed six months of data. The data revealed nearly 30% of their orders were, were for a specific order type, I'll call it a single line, single unit order, and 75% of the orders were for five or fewer lines. This gave them a new perspective on how to pick orders. In the omni-channel supply chain, a typical wholesale distributor warehouse will have at least two to three different order types or profiles. This table is from an ex example Excellos High Jump customer who sells through their own web store to miscellaneous distributors and through large big box retail centers. We see 15% of the orders are medium sized, multi-line, 35% of the orders are for big box re replenishment, and 50% are the typical e-commerce single line, single unit orders. Knowing this information will help you define optimal pick workflows. We'll discuss a few of these pick workflows next. Discrete order picking is the most common and the easiest to implement and manage. Essentially, one picker works on one order until it's complete. Batch pick helps reduce travel time by grouping line item picks from multiple orders together. 
if one item goes to four orders, enough of the item for all four orders is picked in aggregate while you're at the bin. The items are then sorted at a subsequent process. A variation on batch pick is cluster picking. However, this time the operator will, will take four cartons, one for each order, on a cart and put the items into each carton as picked. This minimizes average travel time per pick but adds complexity to the pick process. Here are a couple example cluster pick carts where customers can pick up to 18 orders on the left and up to nine orders on the right. When designing a cluster pick process, consideration needs to be given to the trade-offs between reduced travel time and excess handling requirements. At some point, there will be diminishing marginal return on cluster size. And you'll also need enough aisle space in your layout if you intend to use the pick carts like those shown earlier. Another pick strategy, zone picking, has multiple pickers processing picks from their assigned zone or area for the same order then moving the items to a pack station where they are consolidated into a shipping case. This might help if you're picking large Amazon type orders with a short delivery lead time where you can pick in parallel rather than in series. Other things driving labor productivity improvements are pre-posting and pre-routing sales orders prior to picking. Pre-posting is the process of making certain the inventory is available in the bin prior to sending the operator to pick. Pre-routing is the process of mapping out the pick travel path to reduce wasted motion and travel during the pick tour. These two practices will save you significant time and effort during the pick process, but it's challenging to effectively execute without WMS support. Let's show an example of pre-routing improvements by using a grocery shopping list. You might have items on the shopping list in random order. Sometimes you develop the list based on when you realized you needed the product. There is no rationale. At this point, the list serves the purpose of a memory jogger to remind you what to buy on the next trip to the store. Next, we look at the flow of picking the as-is grocery list. Now, picking the list as-is, the pick path in a grocery store would resemble, we walk in, we find the milk. Next, go to the pickles. From there, find the bread. Eggs are next. Uh, Coca-Cola. Got to have some high jump WMS. And finally, proceed to the checkout. From a bird's eye view, I expect you can, always, you can see ways to improve this, wor this workflow. Uh, sorting a list based on travel sequence or pre-routing will make the pick tour much more efficient. So we walk in, find the Coca-Cola, the bread, the pickles, I jump WMS, milk, eggs, and we proceed to the checkout. You might agree this is much more organized and efficient, and it works well, especially if you want to keep the milk and eggs refrigerated as long as possible but I'm sure you can think of an example why this concept might need some tweaking. Well, if you're going to buy a lot of soda, you might want to get this last to keep from having to move the heavy load around the store. And you probably don't want to stack the, the heavy soda on top of the bread and eggs. But whatever your rationale, these same principles and considerations apply when planning your warehousing picking strategies. Next, I want to discuss another productivity driver that can save you 66%. A common term you will hear in warehousing best practices is slotting or profiling. Slotting is defined as the process of identifying the most efficient placement for each item in a distribution center. Since each warehouse or distribution center is different, proper slotting depends on a facility's unique product, movement, and storage characteristics. An optimal slotting plan allows workers to pick items more quickly and accurately and reduces the risk of injuries. Slotting uses ABC profiling, 80-20 analysis, and cube movement data to keep your high-moving products in golden or strike zones. Benefits of slotting strategy include improved picker productivity, better pick accuracy, more efficient replenishments, ability to better manage the workload across the facility, and improve ergonomics and safety. Next, we'll show an example of a product slotted warehouse. Slotting attempts to keep fast-moving A items closer to the point of use with slower-moving B and C items further away. In the warehouse, A items would be slotted or stored closer to shipping and in easily accessible bins. B items further away and C items the furthest away of all. With the ABC slotting design theory in mind, what is the best shape of a warehouse? Well, to keep product equally distributed around the shipping dock, 
The warehouse would be a circle with shipping in the center and products slotted in a bullseye around the dock. Of course, the underground tunnels required to get trucks to the shipping dock might be cost prohibitive. Here's an example of how a slotting strategy can reduce travel time and save you money. We start with a 1,000 foot long building with shipping on the left. Without a slotting strategy, product is randomly stored throughout the facility and the average peak travel distance is 1,000 feet. 500 feet in, 500 feet out occurring 100% of the time. With slotting, let's define A items as 20% of the items generating 80% of the activity and consuming roughly 20% of the storage space. Average travel distance for A item picks is 160 feet. 100 feet in, 100 feet out occurring 80% of the time. B items are defined as the next 30% of the items driving 15% of the activity and consuming 30% of the storage space. Average travel distance for B item picks is 105 feet. 350 feet in, 350 feet out, occurring 15% of the time. And C items will be the remaining 50% of the items, driving 5% of the activity and consuming the remaining 50% of the space. Average travel distance for C item picks is 75 feet. 750 feet in, 750 feet out, but only occurring 5% of the time. In total, the average travel distance to pick with a slotted layout is 340 feet. 160 plus 105 plus 75 for a savings of 66% per pick. Slotting is something you can do without WMS support, and I imagine many of you already are, if only on a limited or mental basis. However, a solution like Excellus One WMS will automate the analysis process and help the slotting execution. As your warehouse becomes larger and begins to fill, it may be more difficult for material handlers to find empty bins to store product. If you find your operators driving around excessively, they are either moonlighting with Uber or searching for available storage bins. You should see a direct labor productivity improvement using the directed put away functionality in the WMS. Directed put away use, uses ladder logic to survey the warehouse for all available storage bins and suggest the best bin for the product. Additionally, directed put away will help ensure product is stored in the appropriate environments. For example, hazmat, cold storage, or secured storage. This will help you reduce product spoilage from being stored in the wrong temperature, will help you reduce shrinkage associated with high value products, or can help you maintain compliance with government regulations. Next, let's shift gears and discuss savings associated to inventory reduction. With better inventory accuracy and shorter lead times, you may be able to reduce inventory levels in the warehouse. However, this could be a slippery slope. Many warehouse operations have little impact on the amount of inventory they have. They are told how much they will receive from purchasing and how much they, they will ship from sales. And things like long shipping lead times, economic lot sizing, and general corporate policy could restrict inventory reductions. And there are many reasons for keeping excess inventory, including customer satisfaction, having complete product lines, lead time uncertainty. For example, I have several customers that will have full warehouses at the start of the year due to the Chinese New Year celebration and they're planning around their shipping delays expected out of China. And a less strategic reason, for example, management bonuses might be impacted by excessive inventory write-offs. So the inventory probably won't go away anytime soon. But these reasons should be compared to the cost of carrying these items. If you do claim this tangible benefit associated to using WMS, you could target a 15 to 30 percent reduction in inventory. Regarding carrying costs, a more efficient warehouse could have a positive impact in this area. A more efficient warehouse could result in lower inventory levels, impacting inventory investment, insurance, and taxes. WMS could also reduce overall storage requirements, resulting in less money spent on third-party warehouses and potentially company-owned or leased facilities. And better inventory management should result in less obsolescence. If you do decide to claim an inventory reduction, consider there is a one-time benefit associated with a reduction in working capital, associated with not buying as much, and an ongoing carrying cost benefit associated with having less inventory. The higher the carrying cost for your company, the more potential ongoing savings you can realize. And inventory accuracy results in potential better inventory turns. As seen in this chart, this can also have a positive impact on carrying costs. 
turning inventory quicker could result in reductions of inventory carrying costs. Over time, with better inventory accuracy supported by real-time and automated cycle counting, you may be able to eliminate the process of taking a physical inventory. Along with having a direct impact on the corporate balance sheet, removing the physical count process eliminates costs associated with shutting down the facility to control inventory movements, paying staff overtime for taking the physical inventory, which typically happens over a weekend and involves additional management and thank you donuts, and typically involves resources not familiar with the warehouse, and potential delays in shipping orders, although this should not be an issue with effective physical inventory management. Next, let's discuss improvements associated to shipping. The integrated Excellus One warehouse solution works with the Excellus One shipping functionality to ensure complete orders are being shipped on time with the correct information. If shipping errors are high and frequent, the company might be penalized by the customer for missed shipments. Some of your retail customers may use this as a profit center. A worse scenario is missed shipments could eventually result in lost business. And there are also costs associated to correcting the errors. With a good WMS and a well-planned shipping process, expect at least 99.9 .9 plus percent shipping accuracy. Using the integrated shipping system with Excellus One WMS will allow more flexibility in shipping options. For example, the automatic data capture device or the handheld scanner used for data collection can also be used as a mobile shipping station. This will allow you to enter basic ship data from a mobile device and reduce ship station space requirements. And for certain types of orders, for example, the single line, single unit orders I spoke about earlier, the ship process can be fulfilled fully automated. As an example, when the order is released for picking, the partial ship label is printed, the label is applied to the ship carton, and the product is picked directly to the ship carton. And when the pick is complete, the ship carton is taped and set onto the carrier pallet on the shipping dock. This allows you to eliminate the need to repack the carton and reduce pack and ship station space requirements. It's a very streamlined process, specifically for the single line, single unit parcel orders. And regarding space requirements, overall, better space planning and performance typically results in improved space utilization, resulting in avoiding the need to expand or use off-site storage. You may not be able to reuse or resell one aisle of extra storage space, but having the space available for peak season and temporary storage makes for a more efficient operation. Rewarehousing will help free up space by effectively identifying partial full locations that could be consolidated, and better planning and product information will allow for using the best practice of different bin sizes. Having flexible picking options found in a good WMS will allow you to set up a warehouse within a warehouse. In this concept, case quantities are picked from bulk or flow racks, and each is picked from smaller bin shelving. This will allow you to get more picks in a smaller area, resulting in faster order throughput, reduced pick errors, and overall better labor productivity. And having these smaller areas is generally easier to manage. A concept closely aligned to warehouse in the warehouse is forward pick and reserve storage. Using a forward pick strategy helps keep a smaller volume of inventory in easily accessible bins or the forward pick area, with the overstock in remote bins or the reserve storage area. In this strategy, the most popular items are stored in forward pick bins in small amounts, typically measured in days on hand. So order picking can be concentrated within a relatively small area. This reduces average pick travel time and distance and is generally easier to supervise. The trade-off is the forward pick bins must be replenished from a bulk storage or reserve area elsewhere in the warehouse where inventory levels are measured in weeks or months on hand. A typical forward pick area for small parts is an aisle or more of carton flow racks that are easily replenished. Because it is a relatively inexpensive to pick from the forward pick area, this space is particularly valuable. When creating a forward pick zone, consider the space may become congested with picking operators as more picks are concentrated in this area. You might counter this effect by putting the highest moving items in multiple bins spread out within the zone. As mentioned, using a forward pick strategy helps keep the smaller volume of inventory in easily accessible bins or the forward pick with the excess stock in remote bins or reserve storage. This could be done by placing forward pick bins on the lower levels of the selective racks with all overhead selective rack bins used for reserve storage. 
You might visit a Lowe's or a Home Depot store in the U.S. to get an idea of this type of storage. Now, when the forward pick bins reach a minimum defined inventory level, a replenishment from reserve storage to the forward pick bins needs to occur. We'll cover this replenishment topic next. A productivity drain in the warehouse results when an operator goes to a bin to perform a pick, and there's not enough product in the bin for the operator to complete the task. On average, it takes four times as long to pick a product that is not there than to pick a product from a bin with enough inventory. If you think about it, when an operator goes to a bin for a pick, and there's not enough inventory, what happens? First, they look at the pick list a couple times, recheck and make sure they are at the correct bin and looking at, for the correct product. Next, they search behind the pallet. They'll look to the bin to the right and to the left until they finally give up and call a supervisor, which creates yet another productivity drain. And then they finally move on to the next task. All of this is wasted time. If you're going to use forward pick, make certain to have a supporting replenishment strategy, which is part of a good WMS. Next, consider how much you could save if you didn't put product away and or pick inventory from storage bins. Cross-docking is a logistics procedure where products from a supplier or manufacturing plant are distributed directly to a waiting sales order with marginal to no handling or storage time. You can potentially reduce storage requirements and improve overall labor productivity by moving product from the receiving dock direct to an outbound order. This practice is best supported with some form of technology to match inbound receipts with open outbound orders. WMS can help you improve equipment utilization by ensuring the correct type of material handling equipment is used, optimizing space being consumed by, for storage and or maintain equipment, and ensuring your equipment is properly maintained. As an example, here is a checklist from the, the Excellus One inspection tool you can use to update maintenance records and extend equipment life. The inspection tool is a fully integrated freeform questionnaire you can use to create checklists and decision trees for various processes. Plan for an improvement in equipment utilization from 5 to 20 percent. There are other potential areas where WMS can have a tangible benefit. Sales could potentially improve with better inventory availability. Fewer sa sales will be lost due to unmet commitments. Uh, better planning and performance in the warehouse will result in fewer unplanned receiving and shipping delays, which lowers transportation demerge charges. Better planning and inventory visibility will reduce the need for warehouse-created rush orders and associated operational disruptions. And moving to a mobile data collection-driven environment can reduce the need for paper documentation in ma many areas, uh, including receiving, put away, picking, etc. As you develop a business case for warehousing or any other project, keep in mind more may not always be better. Attempting to include too much of a tangible benefit or too many intangible benefits could result in a poorly received return on investment analysis. Next, we will review some intangible benefits you might consider for your WMS business case analysis. In a paper-based warehouse, errors associated to data entry or fat fingering are prevalent. I've seen an estimate that one in every 300 keystrokes results in an error. If you compare this with the mobile data collection devices, that results in one missed scan or error per million cases. WMS can also impact customer service levels, resulting in retained customers, acquiring more customers, and reducing costs associated to poor customer service. For example, the VP of Distribution for an aftermarket auto parts distributor said, it costs us approximately $600 per order, and that is just the internal cost. When you add in the cost to our customers, the number nearly doubles. As you're processing transactions through the warehouse, you should be able to tap into the data provided to help you understand the operations and, more importantly, proactively manage change. Excellus One Pulse is a fully integrated operational insight tool, allowing you to turn your data into usable information in the form of key performance indicators, pivot grids, and both reactive and proactive alerts. Pulse can span the applications you use within your extended enterprise. With its open connectivity layer, Pulse will pull KPI data from different parts of your operation, like warehouse management, parcel shipping operations, your EDI trading partner network, and even your ERP system. Excellus One WMS also has a statistics display on various screens, allowing management to forecast and plan labor requirements. 
and there are over 45 standard reports you can use to help better manage operations and visualize employee productivity. And Pulse can also trigger two types of alerts. Event-driven or reactive alerts are generated when information entered, changed, or deleted in the system. For example, when a sales order is picked or a purchase order is received. Proactive alerts are generated when something doesn't happen. For example, when a scheduled receipt does not arrive on time, when an order is not shipped by 5 p.m., or when an operator does not perform a task for over 10 minutes. Alerts can be delivered to the alert dashboard on your computer through email or text messaging to both individuals and or groups. With real-time visibility into activities, workload management can be used to balance the flow of activity across the warehouse. This helps minimize the impact of process bottlenecks, resulting in a more efficient operation. WMS also allows the company to implement best practices required by their customers or that will benefit their customers. For example, value-added services such as kitting and light assembly could allow a company to implement a postponement strategy. And event triggers can be set up to issue messages to partners in the supply chain. There are several other intangible benefits you can consider, but at this point, it's becoming more difficult to quantify dollar savings. Uh, for example, having a common WMS in multiple facilities will result in standard processes, or what I call the McDonald's effect, with shared support across the facilities. Employee satisfaction could improve as their work becomes more efficient and they become less tired at the end of their shifts. Also, employee skills should improve as they begin to learn and work with the new technology, making them more valuable to the company. With real-time tracking of task and labor, both inventory and orders flow more fluidly through the facility and without being lost or misplaced. Uh, with more efficient operations, order cycle times might be reduced, meaning your company might be easier to do business with, or at least you might be able to deliver the order more quickly. And the company and employees might benefit from participating on a customer advisory board, a user conference, or in general user networking with other companies. Let's conclude with a quick discussion on how to chart the benefits and manage change. Once these potential benefits and, your, and the others you identify, you can begin to chart the benefits based on their characteristic and potential management responsiveness to help define which benefits should be included in the business case. Uh, from my experiences, area one are the benefits typically included in all benefit, all benefit business cases, and these are typically the tangible benefits. Uh, area two are the benefits considered on a case-by-case -case basis and will really depend more on your, your financial team's responsiveness. And area three are the benefits that are hard to quantify and probably will not, not make the cut. From a planning and a change management perspective, there may be a predictable drop-off in performance due to the implementation of a new process and systems. The response is a natural reaction to major change. Target performance can be achieved by proactively managing this change. Managing expectations means letting all involved know things might get worse before they get better, especially during go live. As with any change, implementing WMS might result in an immediate drop off in operational performance due to many factors including unexpected process results, misdefined procedures, and employee learning curve effects. The key thing to consider is to plan for this drop off when calculating the project payback period. Effective project and change management will increase the speed of adoption and increase proficiency, minimizing the severity of this initial lost performance. And once the project has realized steady state, you can then begin to implement continuous improvement activities to further drive benefits. And a phenomenon I've seen on some projects is productivity actually improving during the project design phase, before the solution is implemented. This is generally the result of the Hawthorne effect, where people tend to perform better when they feel they are being observed. Your job is to efficiently manage the change and these variables throughout the duration of the project. In summary, if you're asked for your elevator pitch on WMS value drivers and why your company should buy a WMS, I would encourage you to em emphasize uh, improved efficiencies around inventory utilization, labor productivity, and space utilization. Um, number two, improved customer service levels in the form of on-time and accurate deliveries and more importantly, being able to satisfy changing customer requirements, for example, uh, customer-specific uh, pack and ship labels. And number three, having access to real-time information to allow your leadership to 
more proactively manage operations. Now go make a difference, and if you can't make a difference, make a pie, because as Richard knows, everybody likes pie. And there, Richard, we're open for questions, criticisms, or cannonballs. True story, I certainly like pie. I uh, can't speak for everybody on that one, but I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody, um, and we will take some questions. Yeah. Hang on yeah. one sec. Okay, that should be everybody. Um, does anybody have any questions about the presentation, about SWK, about uh, what my favorite pie is? You name it. All right, I guess we got no questions as of now, but feel free to interrupt. Um, I've spoken to many of you individually about your individual applications for Acellus One, your ERP integrations, implementation timelines, estimated costing, and everything else. So feel free to ask me any questions. If you need to go over anything specific from the presentation, feel free to reach out to Chris or myself or anybody on the SWK warehouse management team. Um, I would just like to thank everybody for attending today. And um, I guess that's it unless you have any questions. Last second. All right, I guess that wraps things up. Chris, thank you very much for uh, doing this presentation for us today and uh, looking forward to another in the future. Thank you. Thank you.